I kept one stallion, 27 years. He came from Alabama as a two-year-old, and uh, we kept him uh, until he died at 29 years of age in 1992. Uh, I have a number of horses now. Uh, I only keep mares, uh, colts, one uh, or foals, uh, whether they're colts or fillies. Uh, I've got one stallion that I keep. I, I don't keep geldings. Uh, they're, they're made to sell. Uh, I breed and ride and drive the same horses. Uh, I've got a couple that uh, you know money won't buy. Big Mama. Uh, the one that my grandchildren ride, yet she has enough uh, uh, spunk and get up and goes that uh, she's all that I would want to ride. I have a gray mare named Little Bit. That is my favorite sad horse. A young mare named Matilda that uh, has a foal now that's about, about two and a half months old. Uh, she's a four-year-old, an extra good horse. Uh, we just let her take a year out uh, to raise a couple before we get serious about riding her on freight. Um, then I have the two and a half year old mare in Alabama that I will pick up the first weekend in October plus school teacher. Uh, school, uh, school teacher is for sale and the little mare in Alabama is for sale. The uh, 15 year old mare uh, is uh, for sale. I don't have her. I sold her. Uh, she belonged to my son, first of all, and then I sold her for him uh, to a man who bought her for his daughter-in-law. The daughter-in-law wrote her twice and was through with her. Has no more interest in her. And doesn't even go out to see her when she comes. So that mare is for sale. Uh, she's had uh, uh, four stud coats that I know about, and she had uh, at least a couple of more that I'm not sure what sex they were. But uh, she's had her last coat was born in June of 98. Uh, he was by my stallion, uh, Dr. Cumberton. Uh, I'm uh, 67 years old. I was diagnosed with polymyositis in 1985. And uh, from 85 until 90, I was on prednisone every day. Uh, when I was, my condition was declared in remission uh, from the disease itself and uh, from the prednisone I'd taken for five years, my spine fused. Uh, the neck only bends and the fifth vertebrae, uh, lower vertebrae bends. Uh, my leg movements are restricted. Uh, I, I do have pretty good use of my arms and hands. But in this physical condition, I'm training uh, young horses. I, I start them myself in the round pen. I, I hitch them uh, by myself without any help the first time I hitch them. And I begin to drive them, and, I, and because I can spend more hours in a buggy than I can spend in a saddle, uh, I break them uh, to drive completely, and then I have someone who's younger and better than I am to ride them the first few times, and then I take over. And uh, you you see the way that I get around, uh, that I don't get around very well. Uh, yet these McCurdy horses are so calm and so gentle and so biddable until I can break them in the condition that I'm in. Um, basically, that's uh, the thing that I can tell you. Let me digress a moment, though, to talk about registration. Uh, the people who uh, have had those, these horses through the years, and they have come down through uh, several generations, uh, if they don't have it written down on paper, they can, they can tell you uh, exactly how these uh, individual horses relate uh, to the uh, what is considered the original McCurdy's. Uh, Dr. Uh, uh, McLean was is the first.
first one that we uh, require them to be related to through his three sons, uh, McCurdy's Fox, Great John McCurdy, and Ed McCurdy. Uh, both Fox and John were grayish, and Ed was a bay. And uh, gray is a color that is uh, considered in Alabama to be the most desired. But here in South Carolina, where I live, uh, people don't like them. They, they, they say that, you know, going back to the days on the farm where they uh, plowed with mules and horses, they said that the only, you know, the only person who will plow a great mule uh, is uh, somebody who can't afford anybody.